set to race here. They're off. They're racing over five furlongs for the flat is back on Racing TV. Phillies restricted. Novices stakes. Good start by Vitali. Lynn Sanders away well in the blue and white towards the near side. Match that also prominent. The dark grey with the orange sleeves in cap. Tucked in behind them races the red and white jacket of Chat up line and further to the inside the purple of Comat. Behind those Foxfield followed by Mistress Tete and completely outspeeded at the back is Miss Rainbow. Through the first couple of furlongs they go then. Vitali the black and white with a noseband. The blue and white is Lynn Sander, followed through by Match That to the near side and then Comat down the inside rail. They're followed through by Chat Up Line. Behind Chat Up Line, Foxfield is trying to get into top gear. They're clear of the others. Back towards the final furlong and a half then. Still there, Vitali. Now drawn out for an effort is Comat. Match That to the near side and Sander's given way. Down the centre, Foxfield's trying to run on late, but it's still Vitali off the front, in front by a uh, length. Now being uh, mowed down by Comat, who's coming through very strongly. Comat hits the front for Kevin Stott and Comat. Matt will clear away to win to Vitali in second. Tight behind Mistress Tete finishing off well to the outside of match that and then chat applied. Kevin Stott in the winner's enclosure here after the first at Redcar. Comat has made a winning debut and done that quite nicely, Kev. Yeah, um, you know, she's, she's been working well at home. Um, we kind of went here, you know, because of the soft ground. Um, she's bred to get further, but we thought we'd bring her up here. Um, she's not very big, but, you know, she's, she, she tries hard. Um, so yeah, no, I was pleased. A little bit green early, just had to find her feet, but halfway I was pretty confident. Um, she really pricked her ears when I did hit the front, to be fair. So yeah, no, it's it's nice for it's nice for everyone, and especially Kia, because this is Kia's first homebred. So oh, um, okay. yeah, he'd be he'd be delighted with that. I'm sure he will, and you must be delighted with the start that you've made with this association. Nice two-year-old win the other day. Plenty of winners going in, and it's it's just the start you'd have wanted. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, I think everyone kind of knows that Ammo's got sharp two-year-olds because that's yeah. what they've known for, obviously. But that's obviously, you know, the boss. He's he likes them, likes them early and um, and sharp. So yeah, no, it's brilliant. Some nice, some really really nice team of horses uh, this year. So. And you must look down at Monday entries coming out for the weekend and you look at your options on a Saturday. You, it, it must be a, a lovely position to be in to sort of look forward to those types of horses and hopefully a few of these two-year-olds will, will put more on the board for you. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, you know, it's just a bit hard to choose sometimes, to be <laughs> honest. But no, it's, it's nice to have that, um, be in that position, put it that way. That's Megan's job, so keep her at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done, Kev. Cheers. See you, Kev. Stall six, stall handler clears away. That's it, we're ready and set. They're off. Racing over seven furlongs for the Yorkshire Wonder Horse Handicap, making a beeline for the far rail is guest list in the red and white. Both territories away well in the blue check jacket, so to Asmund in the royal blue and yellow to the near side. Billy Wedge tucks in behind them with a the red jacket, then Mutan Arsek, the Bayesian brown with a noseband, in company with Code Purple, who's just taking a bit of a grip, the purple jacket with a white disc. A little bit worse than centre pack is Viva Voce, followed by Churchill Bay towards the inside. Martins Brig is sitting well back in the field as they continue their journey back towards us. Revocable is another one who's towards the back of the field. But it's Asmund on the front end as they continue their journey back to the final four and a half. Asmund in front by just over a length to Billy Wedge racing second. Behind those on the inside guest list is next in the field from Bold Territories racing fourth. Mutan Arsek tight on the inside fence back in fifth place. Then Viva Voce to the near side of Code Purple. Churchill Bay towards the back with Martins Briggs. So to the yellow and black of Dr. Khan Jr. and Revocable at the back. 
Down the straight they come back towards the final two and a half. Asmund is still there, but only by a neck being reeled in by Billy Wedge. Near side, Bo Territory is getting going. Coat Purple asked to pick up behind them with guest list and then Mutanasek. Back to the final furlong they come now. Billy Wedge, Asmund battling away on the far side. Bo Territory is trying to go over the top. Coat Purple now drawn out for an effort. And from the back, Martins Briggs beginning to blast home. Needs room. They go inside the final half. Coat Purple the near side. Martins Briggs the far side. Coat Purple will go on to land the spoils to Martins Brig. Back in third was Billy Wedge, followed by both territories in fourth. Code Purple has won the second race on the card here at Redcar for Ben Haslam. Well done, Ben. He looks like horses just thriving at the minute. Yeah, he, we, we just struggled with him last year. We just couldn't get him to string any races together. And he always showed ability. Um, and, and now sort of he started off nicely on the old weather. And we always hoped he might progress when coming back to the turf. So we're glad he did. He, you know, he, was, he wasn't a cheap yearling. So we are hopeful we might, we might keep progressing. He started after his maiden win with that mark in the 70s. He's sort of getting back towards that now. And yeah. the way that he's won that quite snugly, he'd surely have at least hopes and aspirations that he gets even beyond that where he was at initially. That's the hope. Yeah, we went to York, I think, off, off, off that sort of mark. And he just, I think he just mentally wasn't ready for it. And, and then we just really were on the back foot then last year. And we've just, like you say, we have aspirations that he might get higher so fingers crossed but he's, he's, he looks like he's going the right way and mentally he looks a lot better and he look, he obviously handles this ground as well I, I don't think I don't think he'd want quick ground okay so a little bit of ease in the ground with, with that in mind will you keep him fairly busy while the ground's around like this exactly exactly yeah I think we'll just hunt, hunt around for this sort of ground I think good ground would be fine but I think if it starts getting a little bit quicker we'd be wasting our time and you must be very happy where the horses are at the minute. A double, nearly a treble at Ponty last week. Horses generally running very well. Yeah, really pleased. Uh, great, great to start the season off like this. Um, and we didn't go sort of mad with, on the all weather sort of in December, January, and I think we're probably reaping the benefits of of not kind of overdoing that 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 scenario. So. Um, you know, hopefully uh, they can just progress and, and keep improving because they obviously need to to sort of be competitive all summer, don't they? Yeah, of course they do. Well done, man. Thanks. They're off, just missing the kick a little bit was Tolleton Forest as they settle down early on in the Graysmith Legal Straight Mile Handicap Stakes. Crossing to the far side, the nose banded Kangai is first to begin. The white face of the go to between horses and the grey horse knee side, the Luke Pierre Lad. Also nose banded. Zakram tucks in behind them in the yellow and black, followed by Concord in the mauve, and Tolleton Forest in the white with the black star on the cap at the back of the field. So through the first couple of furlongs, and it's Leap Year Lad who's been sent to the front here for Shane Gray. Leads up by just over a length to Kangai racing in second place. The go-to continues to race close up in third. Zakram is still centre pack, followed through by Concord, who's content to sit back in the field in the mauve jacket. And the overall back marker continues to be Tolleton Forest. So right down the straight, they come back towards the halfway point, closing in on the final half mile. And no change on the front end. Still Leap Year Lad setting a decent clip here. Leads up by just over a length to Kangai, who's shadowing the leader. And then a little bit wider out is the go-to. Uh, the second of the grey horses to the inside. Zakram tries to make up a little bit of ground. Concord's coming down the centre and is making ground. The back marker is Tolleton Forest. Closing in on the final two and a half, then Leap Year Lad about to be gathered in by the smooth-travelling Concord. Concord between horses is Kangai. They're followed through by Zakram, who's back in fourth, but Concord's been sent to the front, and this one starts to readily quicken on. Back towards the final furlong they come. Concord goes on by a couple. Leap Year Lad is kept going, so too Kangai in the, in the red and black stripes, but up front is Concord, who's sailing away here inside the final half. Concord just nudged out hands and heels by uh, Ben Curtis, who will go on to win very readily indeed. Back in second is Kangai, Leap Year Lad for third, and Zakram came home fourth.
third race here at Red Car has been won by Ben Curtis and Concord for trainer George Bowie and improved form on the back of uh, a break and switch to handicaps, Ben. Yeah, I think they gave him a bit of time and um, he obviously strengthened up. He's a lovely big horse. He had the three runs, um, probably on the all weather, so, you know, onto grass and um, a bit more size about him and filled out and, um, yeah, he went through the race well. Went through it very well and you seemed confident from a long way out that you were going to pick them up. Yeah, we went a good even gallop, to be fair, and he relaxed into the race lovely and, you know, really I wanted to go in behind the leader, but Danny had already taken that spot, so I had to bring him out and it was very easy and plain, plain sailing for him, you know, so, um, yeah, it was nice. Good. good day to go and win like that as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, he did it nicely and ground and everything was perfect for him, so, very good. Two more rides to come, including another one for George with Cantora, who you would think will enjoy the conditions. Yeah, I love the ground. Um, looked like wanted every yard of this trip when won here at the, the back end of last year. Um, thought ran a decent race in Lingfield the last day, led till, I mean, you'd, you'd say he was going to win easy at the furlong and a half pole and, you know, dropped away in the last furlong. So hopefully we ground, um, if we stay the trip, then every chance. And your other ride is uh, double up and there for, for Hugo Palmer. He's a lovely big horse. He's done nothing wrong in two runs. Um, we went steady in Newcastle the last day that wouldn't, wouldn't have suited him. Um, so hopefully he can show up. I think he'll, he'll enjoy the, the ground here and... Um, yeah, he's one to look forward to maybe down the line, but hopefully he puts up a good show today. Yeah, well, good luck with those and well done already. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. All in, set to race, they're off. Over the mile for the SDD Smith Group Handicap Stakes. Once again, they're all tracking towards the far side. Away well is Swiss Ace. Also away well, May Song. And towards the near side, Copper and Five is showing plenty of early speed. Uh, just tucked in behind them on the far side, Crown Thorpe. Followed through by Shaladaru centre field with Bell Haven, and then uh, towards the back of the field is Give It Some Teddy. Also towards the back, Young Fire and La Trinidad is the overall back marker as they go through the first two and a half furlongs. Copper and five, the maroon and green horse nose banded towards the inside, then leads up by about a length and a half to Crownthorpe, who races in second position. Red Cap with the nose band, a little bit deeper out. May Song also nose banded and nose banded down the centre. The corded jacket of Swiss Ace. Behind that one, Shaladai in the base. Beige jacket is next in the field. Bellhaven tight on the inside fence. The beige jacket with the blue sleeves, beige cap. Give it some teddy towards the back. La Trinidad towards the back makes up a bit of ground. Red jacket, white chevron striped cap. Young Fire with a hoop cap is still well back in the field. Down towards the final three and a half. Copper and five towards the inside. Driven along Crownthorpe. Near side, May Song travelling well. Swiss Ace trying to pick up with La Trinidad. Bellhaven's been squeezed. Centre pack response not immediate. From the back, give it some teddy. And Shaladar both trying to pick up but it's May Song who's hit the front back inside the final two now May Song in front tackled behind by La Trinidad kept going towards the near side is Swiss A Shaladar's trying to go over the top to the near side as well May Song in the clear though for Sharik Mode as they go inside the final half furlong kept up to his work May Song is scorching away here and May Song will go on to land the spoils to Shaladar in second La Trinidad for third coming through for fourth maybe just give it some teddy towards the outside Crowdthorpe on the inner Feature race of the day here at Red Car has been won by May Song and Sharik Mud, and we'll uh, talk about that being your first success a little bit more in a second. But well done on that, and May Song has, has won that very well. Oh yeah, so, you know, just the last yeah, uh, uh, I've ridden him a last like, couple of times before, but every time he finished second. But this time he just ran so well, and uh, and just won. Like, you know, last two for long, I just want him to go, and then he just flew away, and then gone. And a good run at Doncaster last time out showed yeah. that he, he likes this kind of ground and, and that's probably helped him today, has it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but just the last time, I was very unlucky. Just, you know, the, yeah, uh, uh, Thor Hammer rode him last time, but just unlucky last time. But, but yeah, yeah uh, uh, he loved that, that ground, soft ground. 
Yeah. And as I mentioned, that is a, a first career success for you. You've, you've had a few goes and gone close a few times, including on this horse. How did it feel to finally hit the target? Uh, 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 I just can't describe how happy I am today. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hopefully just, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, my trainer Alice has supported me very well and, uh, and gave me a lot of ride on a good horses. So hopefully in the future, yeah, she'll give me a ride on like this, like this winner as well. And as you say, Alice, your boss, supporting you, giving you those opportunities. So nice to repair that. And having her horses in such good form is a help. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah she, uh, she's a very hard-working trainer. And, you know, like she's on the focus on the, on the nice nice horses. Like, yeah, we've got like over 50 horses and every horse is in good form nowadays. So hopefully in the future they will all give a good success in this year. And tell us a little bit about your background as well, Sharik. How long have you been riding and, and where are you from originally? Yeah, uh, I'm from India, really, and uh, yeah. So um, my dad, my dad has been working for Sylvester Kirk in Lamborn over since, since last 14 years, and then I come to join him like seven years ago, and I worked for Sylvester Kirk before, but uh, uh, unfortunately I didn't get a much ride there in Lamborn, so I moved to Newmarket, and uh, Alice Hans should give, give me a good rides and winner as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. I'm sure the next one won't be too far away, and very well done. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. That's it, the Royal Enton set race, they're off, racing over a mile and two furlongs for the watch live on Racing TV, Novices Stakes, and away well is Dubai Crystal, yellow jacket, black spots, white cap, also away well, Peace Man in the black and white diagonal stripes with the hooped cap, and Bring Back Memories settles in third place in the black and pink. Behind those, Double Oban in the pale blue and red is followed towards the back by Bailey's Kelstar, the yellow with the green stripe, and Bystander is a narrow back marker in the yellow jacket with the large black spots and spots on the cap. Probably five lengths separating the runners, maybe six as they go through the first couple of furlongs, and it's Dubai Crystal and Sam James setting an even gallop by about three parts of a length to Double Oban racing in second place. They're followed through by Peace Man close up third, and then in the centre, Bring Back memories racing fourth behind that one on the inside Bailey's Kelstar and the back marker continues to be bystander and Jack Mitchell settle that one six off the leader as they go towards the end of the back stretch are about to swing a left-handed turn to go back inside the final six furlongs no change up front Dubai Crystal still in front by about three parts of a length to double open racing second right down the inside Peace Man is next followed throughout deeper by Bring Back Memories behind those bystander towards the back just been shaken up on the turn Bailey Kelstar towards the inside of that one. Down the straight they come then back towards the final four and a half now. They've leveled up for home and it's still Dubai Crystal and she still leads by a length. To double open racing second back in third piece man right down the rail. Bring back memories out wide. Bystander seems to be back on the bridle traveling okay with a white face followed through by Bailey's Kelstar on the fence. Down the straight they come back inside the final three furlongs now and Dubai Crystal being satellite off the front. Quickens on by a couple of lengths. Trying to give chases, Peace Man with double open and bring back memories. But this filly's trying to slip the field here. Dubai Crystal inside the final two furlongs. Dubai Crystal has gone on by four. Peace Man giving chase to double open, followed by bring back memories. Bailey's Calstar not picking up at all. His bystander back towards the final furlong. They come a look behind from Sam James, but Dubai Crystal has got a five or six length break on the field here. Inside the final half furlong they go. Dubai Crystal racing up towards the line. Will make well for trainer Carl Burke and. Jockey Sam James, a good win from Dubai Crystal. Double open for second, bring back memories in third. Peace Man was fourth. That's it. They're all in. We're set to race. They're off. 
Over a mile and two furlongs for the RacingTV.com handicap. Revo Revo quick to begin in the beige and brown jacket. Also prominent, the Arto's Angel and Angel's Voice got a good start in the white cheek pieces as they settle down early. Bit of a duel on for the lead. Revo Revo to the inside of the Arto's Angel, three deep Angel's Voice. Barossa Central center pack on the inside of Cantoro, who's just taking a little bit of a grip. A little bit deeper out of that one leading company in the black and white check. Settling towards the back, Glorious Lion is racing second last and Wadeka Gomez in the black and yellow is the overall back marker. And Jack Mitchell settled him about seven off the leader, which is Revo Raver as they continue their journey down the far side of the track. So they're through the first three furlongs or so inside the seven. Revo Raver in front by about three parts of a length to Iato's Angel racing in second. Close up behind Angel's Voice, racing a little bit deeper on the track, followed through towards the inside by Barossa. Glorious Lion next in the maroon jacket, gold braid, followed by Cantora in the pink with the purple stripe, and out deep the black and white checks of leading company, and two lengths back to Wadeka Gomez at the back of the eight-runner field. They've left the back stretch behind them. They're on the turn inside the five, and it's Revo Raver in front by about three parts of a length to Iato's Angel, who's lobbing along in second place. Behind those down the inside, Barossa. A little bit wider of that one is Angel's voice in the star jacket. Le uh, leading company in the checks, Cantora, and then uh, Glorious Angel just in a bit of a pocket behind the pace. Cantora was a bit short of room there as well. Wadeka Gomez at the back of the field is starting to pick up. Back to the final three furlongs, and inside it, Revo Raver to the inside of the Arto's Angel travelling well. Glorious Angels in the clear. Leading company kept going. On the inside, Barossa. Still no room at the end for Cantora. Behind those, what Aker game Gomez is trying to pick up. Beato's Angels got first run as they go inside the final two. Beato's Angel by a length and a half. Glorious Lion trying to close. So to Cantora. Leading company is kept going in the centre. Back to the final furlong and a half then. On the far side, Beato's Angel. Cantora is now in the, in the clear. She's got a length to find. Behind that one, Glorious Angel from leading company, Eato's Angel Cantora still coming to the near side and begins to sweep past, battling back on the inside though, Eato's Angel back for more, Eato's Angel out battling Cantora, Eato's Angel went on to score to Cantora in second Glorious Lion for third, then leading company, Revo Reva and Warika Gomez Set to go, and they're off. Racing over a mile and two furlongs for the watch race replays at RacingTV.com. Handicap stakes. Uh, way well towards the near side is Flag of Truth. Also prominent near side is Kusak in the white cheek pieces. Right up with the pace is A1 Alley in the maroon and white. And a little bit deeper of those, Baikal with a good set. The white jacket with the blue stars. Uh, just tucked in behind those races, uh, Richard P. Smith sitting in company with Nache Trace. And center pack is Merseyside. Contrast behind those. Luna Jet sits back in the field. Ben Adelid is towards the rear of the pack as well. So too is Soaring Star. And Morning Sun is the over roll back marker and Billy Garrity would have that one about seven or eight off the leader as they go down towards the end of the back straight. Up front then, towards the inside, it's A1 Alley who shows the way, racing in front by about a half length to Baikal, who's steering deep on the track. Uh, right behind those, tucked in behind them, Nache Trace with a bit of a forward move. Flag of Truth still prominent behind the pace as well, as is Cusack towards the inside fence. Uh, that little group then is followed by Richard P. Smith in the purple jacket with the yellow sleeves. Centre pack, Red Astaire, the black and pink towards the outside of runners as they turn in, followed by Merseyside, who's centre pack, and then the white of Luna Jet. Contrast still well back in the field, so too Soaring Star, but Adelaide's well back as well as they continue their journey down the home straight. They're back inside the final half mile. An up front flag of truth towards the inside A1 Alley still right there. Nache 
Trace travelling well with Richard P. Smith behind the pace. They're followed by Cusack. Morning Sunstripe Cap tries to make ground to the inside. Contrast, Blue Jacket, Yellow Cap down the centre of the track making ground. Then the white face of Luna Jet. Nache Trace hits the front. Two and a half furlongs out. Here comes Contrast. Richard P. Smith's beginning to come home strongly. But Contrast and Joe Mason have hit the front. Kicking on by a length and a half to Nache Trace giving chase in second. On the inside, Morning Sun trying to stay on. Down the near side trying to get going is Luna Jet. They're followed by Richard P. Smith, but it's Contrast who leads. Well inside the furlong they go. Contrast, Morning Sun to the far side. Nache Trace kept going with Luna Jet. Contrast just wandering around a bit, being attacked by Luna Jet as they race up towards the line. Luna Jet blasting home. Luna Jet got there to Contrast, Morning Sun for third. But Natalie ran on behind with Nache Trace and they were clear of Cusack.